All right, in this lesson right here, what we're going to do is take a look at how we can construct a very basic path node network. We're just going to have our bot just simply run from point A to point B and let them run back and forth, maybe up the ramp right there that we're looking at in the perspective view. So, Logan, show us what we need to do. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, uh, I'm going to go back to the player start since that technically counts as our first navigation point and create a, uh, start creating a path nodes uh, from here. So I'll set the first one maybe on the top of this first ramp. So to add a path node, I can simply right click anywhere, even over a static mesh. You notice since that we did right click on a static mesh, we have its properties, that we still have near the bottom our normal like add here menu. And one of those things is the add path node. So I'll add the first path node, and there we go, the first point of the network. Hey, we get an apple. So good old Apple too, same, uh, same Apple all dating all the way back to Unreal 1. That's very cool. So just going up, I'm going to try just the uh, very tops of the ramps for starters and see how that builds. And maybe one point at the very top. Now you said to see how that builds. Do you get some sort of indication if they're too far away? Actually you do. Let me add one last path though and we'll see how this is looking when we build paths. Okay. Which I'll explain in just a second. So there, now we've got more of an actual network as opposed to just our single starting point. The bot should have a path to navigate up with. But of course, if we were to play now, this wouldn't count. We haven't rebuilt paths. So this network doesn't exist, just the actors do. So obviously, this rebuilding of paths is very important. Yes. Every t any, anytime something is changed, it needs the, uh, the path network needs to be rec uh, recalculated. So, and that's not just placing these path nodes themselves in there, but other things as well, such as. Um Let's think, like jump pads or right, anything, teleporters? anything that's going to uh, affect the flow of the level. Any items, any path nodes, anything that changes how you move around the level is also going to affect how bots would need to move. Okay. So now, as I was saying before, we need to rebuild. So what I'm going to do is come up here and do a build paths, so that we ac actually calculate this network. And yes, I'm going to get a few checks because I have inventory in the level that hasn't been path noted to yet. So it's just going to warn that there's no navigation points to that. But so we know that we've just been path noting the uh, ramp. So, so this is actually pretty smart then. It yes, it will find points that if there's like you have some item uh, isolated off to the side of the like, level. It's like, hey, your bot will probably want to get to this, but you've not given any way for it to. Right, because yeah, I mean that makes sense. It's an inventory item. You're going to want to get to it. Somehow, Excellent. and it's pointing out here that well, you you can't get to it now. The uh, the bot can't. Okay. But now we have rebuilt. So what we do have paths to, there are paths connecting these. But what if we want to see this? You know, see exactly where those paths are being drawn, and possibly see where there's a broken path okay. that we wouldn't otherwise notice. And it's really easy to do this. I can come up to the uh, and just right click on one of the views, go down to view, and say sh uh, show paths. Now we actually get to see. Uh, the paths that the bot is going to be using to navigate. And you'll see that there's multiple lines indicating two different directions. Right. Well. It will draw each direction. So in some cases where you have a bot jumping off of something, you might only have one direction. Right. In this case, the bot can easily run both ways, so it's built the paths both ways. And you can see arrows as well if you want to zoom right, in Right. If there. you get real close, you can see how this green line is being drawn from this path note here and then a blue line back the other way. And boy, you just said something that was very interesting. This green line here. So I see some different colors going on. Right. Well, what it does is when it's built, like there can be a path can be like closer to some object or it can be in a wide open area. Okay. What it does is it color codes these based on um, like how it built and what type of path it is. For example, a green, um, well, let's start with a blue path. A blue path is what happens when a path is fairly close to something and can be a narrow path. Okay. Um, it's still a valid path. The bot will try to take it. But it's not, um, and this also has some relevance in single player type games as well where you have different sized monsters. But as far as we're concerned with uh, bots in a multiplayer game, so, uh, this just means that the path is closer to something. Okay. So the bot will probably have to stay closer to it to successfully navigate. Other lines like green means there's more space in between. There's like s there's more space around the area so it's easier to navigate to. Okay. Um, other colors that you might see later when building stuff, you can also get uh, white paths. That's a very wide area. I mean, uh, it's out in the open, nothing obstructing it, very easy to follow. Uh, and then two other uh, more special colors we have are red and yellow. Yellow are force paths. We'll see that later when you try to, when you set up a path um, you can actually force a path between two uh, path nodes if it doesn't automatically build that way. Okay. You can also block off a path. If you don't want a path to be connecting two points, you can set it to be a prescribed path, and the bot won't use that path in between the nodes. As a matter of fact, at rebuild time, it'll actually build around that. Very interesting. And finally, you have uh, purple, which could be uh, lift centers and exits. Okay. Um, and also a kind of purple, like pinkish color for uh, ju the jump pad arcs. Okay. So right now we've got something in there. So if we were to actually run the level now, the now game. that we've actually rebuilt these path nodes, we should have somewhere for our bot to run. That's right. So let's go ahead and load the game up. 
Give it a second to load, and I'll also go over a little bit uh, more of a useful command. And you notice before we had to get zoom up on the bot before we could really see what he was doing. I'm going to do that a little bit differently now. I'm going to go in first and ghost out of the level like usual, so we'll be a bit far away to be a little bit hard to see. And then again, add the bot. Only this time, instead of add bots one, I want to be able to refer to this bot by name, so I'll do add named bot. Call like put Ravage in or something, or maybe Gorge. Easy to type. So add name bot gorge. So now I've added gorge to the level, and we can see he's actually running around this time. But again, he's off in the distance, and I just want to check how he's how he's working based on paths, not fighting me. I'm gonna get closer to him without actually going into the level. Right. You do that. want him to like go into an attack mode. Right. I can activate a spectator like uh, view of the of gorge by doing view player, and then typing in the name. So in this case, it'll be gorge. And there we go. So now we can just watch him by himself, but now we've got a nice third-person camera so we can look all around to see how he's working. Very nice. And we can see that, yes, as opposed to staying still now, he's all he's running around that uh, existing path network. One last command that's really useful when working with paths, let's go ahead and show this now since it'll make sense with path nodes in, is a command called show debug. In the case of viewing a bot, show debug should draw, start drawing out the, uh, the various paths. So what it does is it draws a green line out to where he's trying to navigate to, meaning at right when we get to the top, he decides he's going all the way back to the player start. So it traces out a green line. And then it also traces out the white and red lines to the current path. So the white is what he's currently walking on, and red is, is the one he's looking at. And also, uh, this is a bit new to us, and in one of the newer builds, they added a whole lot more debugging information. So it's, it's got quite a bit for uh, looking at Gorge, what he's doing, what he's thinking. All that. sorts so of I mean, things in there. This is a great debugging command when you want to truly see what the bot's thinking and trying to do. So it's that way, even if you have a valid network, you can see whether he's tracing to it or not. Because if he was going for an item on the other side, it would draw the full green line all the way across the map. And right. then he would try to follow it. Right. Okay, very interesting. So let's see, jump back into Unreal, or do you want to... Well, actually, is, did you want to set up some workflow enhancements here just to kind of speed up? Some okay. Well, yeah, we can definitely set something up. First, let me take the show debug off so we can see the screen a little bit clearer. Also, you saw how, uh, like, the second time I've gone, started up the level, first I ghosted out, then I had to add the bot, then I had to go and view the bot. What we could do is just set up some quick key binds so we could uh, s uh, make testing a lot easier. So let me take, I could take, like, the top keys on the numpad. We could use set input to bind those. So the first thing we want to do probably is ghost out of the level. So set input, numpad 7 should work good for ghost, and we could set input maybe numpad 8 for add named bot, so add named bot, we'll add gorge in with the 8 key, numpad 78, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> and finally numpad 9 for the view player command. Now let's test this out and see how it's working. First let me view player uh, myself. So I can get back. If you want to go back to your player, just uh, type in whatever your character name is, which I don't remember what how Buzz the machine is set up. So, no. Just die. <coughs> there. We go. So I respawned in. Block your game is just like you started the level. Now let me test the ghost command. I'm hitting numpad seven, and there. Now I can ghost out of the level. And numpad eight, which is going to add a duplicate bot, but oh well. So numpad eight works. Finally, numpad nine for view player. Nonetheless, you see he's still trying to use the bathrooms even though he's not having any bad things. And now... Okay, and uh, is there anything else that you can think of? or That pretty much wraps up the, the very basics, just getting a usable network in place and then going over a little bit of workflow, making it a little bit easier to see in Unreal Ed. Okay, sounds good. So that's going to wrap up just basic path node networks. Thanks.